thank you for joining me for this video i am mr ish we're looking here at a very simplified representation of an ellipsoid surface area an ellipsoid is a three-dimensional solid which is derived from the ellipse look right over here at an x and y axis if this right here represents your ellipse it's a eccentric circle you're giving a three-dimensional representation this is what you're looking at and how can we determine the surface area of a solid like this i'll show you a simplified version the accurate formula is beyond the scope of basic calculus or beginner's calculus or even calculus one and two it's beyond that level for the purposes of this channel we're looking here at a simplified version but look right over here a two-dimensional representation three-dimensional representation a circle and an ellipse when you look at the circle polygon you're looking at its area in the two-dimensional sense the area is pi r square when you look at the circle in the three-dimensional representation, you have a sphere. And now you're not talking about an area, but you're talking about a surface area, and it becomes 4 pi r square. When you're talking about ellipses in a two-dimensional sense, remove the three-dimensional nature here, but look at it as a two-dimensional polygon. You know the area here is pi a b. But when you look at it in terms of a simplified ellipsoid surface area, this right here will become 4 pi a b. This right here is our goal, and we will determine that for you. And it makes sense. If you have an ellipse which is less eccentric and the ellipse is closer in appearance to a circle, that is you're saying that the A and the B, the major axis, the minor axis are relatively equivalent to each other. Look what happens. You're looking here at a pi times A times A or you're doing a 4 pi times A times A. And if this all were considered as a radius, really looking here at a pi r square and a 4 pi r square. This goes to tell you that how close the ellipse is to a circle were it not for its eccentricity. If you remove the eccentricity, the ellipse is a circle and the ellipsoid would therefore also become a sphere. Anyhow, let's get to the derivation well, procedure for the surface area. Our surface area is going to be dependent on the surface area integral 2 pi lower limit upper limit function square root 1 plus the derivative of that function squared dx but we need to know what the function is our basic equation for an ellipse is x square or a square plus y square or b square equals one it's a ellipse horizontally oriented with the origin as the center and you know you can determine the function your function here is basically equal to y and you would solve for this you would cross multiply common denominators to all of that you'd have x square b square plus y square a square is equal to a square b square you would literally solve for this y and you can and it's not hard what you would end up seeing is you would have a square b square minus x square b square over a square if you calculate this out properly this is what you have and then when you're looking at it you're seeing a b square can be isolated so we can isolate the b square and we can isolate this a square and look what happens you have a square minus x square and you have a b square over a square but if you clean it out your y your function is equal to b over a and root a square minus x square and we need this because it's right here in the formula so let's bring it here f of x is equal to i have b over a and then square root a square minus x square but there's one more item i need it's a derivative i need the derivative of this if y is equal to this and the derivative dy over dx is equal to the derivative of this and you would use a chain rule b over a is a coefficient push it out then you do a chain rule with respect to u i have a root u and then derivative with respect to x i have a square minus x square but you have to compute this you're having a b over a times the derivative from here is a minus 2x and the derivative of, of root u is a 1 over 2 root u and you'll bring that to root u and you do your substitutions, you'd have a minus 2xb over 2a root u, which was a squared minus x squared. These will cancel out. And now you're getting easily what your derivative is, dy over dx is equal to minus bx over a root a squared minus x squared. And why do we need to know it? Because it's right here in the formula. And we have the two essential items we need to get the process started. Now look right over here. You have a representation of a function it's coming from an ellipse but it's a function it passes the vertical line test you're looking at it from minus a to a your one vertex to your other vertex and here's your minor axis endpoint zero comma b minus a comma zero a comma zero you can do your integral lower limits and upper limits using minus a to a but you have an even function you can just do zero up to a and multiply it by two times it by two times the 2 pi which comes in the formula, your lower limit 0, your upper limit a, your function which is this, b over a square root a square minus x square times all of this right here, 1 plus 
this dy over dx whole square. You're doing all of that square and you'll have a b square x square over a square. The radical here, the root will be eliminated by this square. You'll have a, a square times a square minus x square dx. This is what you have to compute and it's not hard. You have to bring in an assumption and then we will utilize that assumption and we will remove that assumption at the end and I'll show you what I mean. Let's start working over here. You see this b over a and you see this 2 times 2 pi? Let's bring these coefficients out. I have a 2 times 2 pi which is a 4 pi times b over a. I'll have a 4 pi b over a and I'm removing this right here. Everything else exists as you see. Now that we've got this part cleaned out, let's clean out this part right here in this radical. And looking only in this large square root, look what I'll do. I have a 1 plus b square x square over, I'm opening this up. I have a a to the 4 minus a square x square. I have a common denominator which I will do. I'll have a a to the 4 minus a square x square. I've multiplied this across over here plus b square x square divided by, this is my new common denominator, a to the 4 minus a square x square. I have to clean this out. How am I going to clean it out? I'm going to come here at that assumption I was alluding to earlier. Assume you have an ellipse which is close in terms to appearance and form to a circle where a is equal to b. So you're looking at an ellipse which is less eccentric but is slightly more circular and that's what we're doing. a is equal to b. Wherever you see a b will bring in an a. I see a b over here, I'm going to bring an a over here in its replacement because I'm saying a is equal to b. I have a less eccentric a more spherical form of an ellipsoid. And now bring up here, I have a b square over here, I'm going to bring a a square. Look what happens. I have a minus a square x square plus a square x square, these will cancel out. What remains here in the radical, I have this. I have a a to the 4 divided by a to the 4 minus a square x square. You can clean this out. You'll have a square root a to the 4 divided by, you can isolate here, a square. And then what will you have? a square minus x square. This will cancel out with this. You'll have a square in the numerator and you'll have a square minus x square in the denominator all under a big root which will replace everything you see over here by means of that assumption we've made where my major and minor axes are relatively equal in dimension to one another. And look at these a's, they'll cancel out. I'll have a 4 pi and 0 to a. I have a square root a square minus x square. And look, I'm going to separate this using laws of radicals into their individual roots. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm looking here at an a square in a root and then a square minus x square in a root and dx. These can cancel out. And you know what's coming out of here. It's a perfect square in a root. A square root, it'll come out as an a. I'm having here a 4 pi, lower limit 0, a. I have an a, dx. This a can come out over here and we can do the antiderivative. It'll be a 4 pi, a. We have an x, upper limit a, and a 0. Upper limit, lower limit, you'll have a 4 pi a times a. Now let's eliminate the assumption and bring in the minor axis back. We'll have a 4 pi a b. And this can represent a relatively simplified ellipsoid surface area formula, which is what we were hoping for all along in this video. Nothing too complex but relatively accurate because if you use this as a formula you'll get a good representative formula for an ellipsoid. One which is not of excessive eccentricity and slightly closer to a spherical ellipsoid in terms of appearance. But that right there would be the goal for this video and we end with that and thank you for watching.